Before we start developing the equation where we also take into account the time, let's first take a look at the equation of the wave where time is kept equal to zero, so the displacement y is simply a function of position x. Let's take a look at how a phase difference would make a difference in this equation. Let's say that we move the whole equation to the right by a factor of pi over 2, a quarter of a, of a wave. So when we do that, the wave would look like this. It would be at a maximum over here where we have a quarter of a wavelength, like that. So the wave would continue like this. We're back up to here. Then we get to the top over here, then back to the bottom, back to over here, back over there, there, and, and so forth. So there the wave has been moved to the right a distance by pi over uh, 2, I suppose, right? So the angle difference is uh, half a pi, which is a quarter of a complete cycle. So we may remember from our trigonometry that when we do that, this equation now would become y, which is a function of x and t still be kept to zero, is equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi over lambda x minus the phase angle. And of course, in this case, the phase angle is pi over 2, because we have to do it in terms of radians. And so this would then become, this is equal to a times the cosine of kx. Remember, k represents the wave number, which is 2 pi over lambda, minus the phase angle. And of course, if we then plug in what that phase angle is, in this case, uh, that would be equal to uh, a times the cosine of kx minus pi over 2. Now, notice that let x equal, for example, uh, pi over 2. That would be the phase difference. And let me make sure that we understand that this is the phase difference. All right. So if x is equal to, well, I shouldn't say x equal pi over 2. I should say if x is equal to uh, lambda over 4, a quarter of a wave. So let x equal a quarter of a wave, which is the amount that we move the wave to the right. What would this be equal to? Now, notice that we expect to find the cosine of that angle to be equal to 1 and the total amplitude to be equal to a. So let's see if that is indeed correct. So I have, um, as an example, y is a function of x and t equal to 0 is equal to a times the cosine of kx minus pi over 2. Now let's plug in the value for x right here. So now let's use the color again. So we have y when x is equal to lambda over 4. So we moved the wave over a quarter of a wavelength, t equal to 0. And we get a times the cosine of k times x. Now x is lambda over 4, lambda over 4 minus pi over 2. All right, now we're going to plug in what k is equal to. Remember, and I really mean remember because this is important, that k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, which is the wave number. Let's now move this equation over here. We're going to plug in for k. 2 pi over lambda and see what we get. So f y, the displacement, when x is equal to lambda over 4 uh, and t is equal to 0, we're going to make it simple, keep time equal 0, is equal to a times the cosine of, instead of k we write 2 pi over lambda, and instead of x we write what x is equal to, which is lambda over 4 minus pi over 2. All right, now let's simplify that. See what we get. So this is equal to a times the cosine of, now notice the lambdas cancel out, and 2 divided by 4 is 1 over 2, so we get pi over 2 minus pi over 2, which is equal to a times the cosine of 0, and of course the cone of 0 is 1, which is simply equal to a. So what I was trying to show you is that if we plug in this value for x, which is of course equal to lambda over 4, we should get a as a result, which proves that this is a good representation of a wave equation where time is kept equal to zero, so that y is simply a function of x when it's shifted by the amount of phi, the phase angle as we call it, that we get the correct uh, equation that describes the red wave right here instead of the black wave. Of course, we can also see 
that if we shift something by a quarter of a wave or by pi over 2, that a times the cosine of the angle minus pi over 2 is really equal to the sine of that function as well. So we can say that, okay, this is therefore equal to a times the sine of kx. It's therefore the same thing as having a phase angle if the phase angle is equal to pi over 2. Okay, so that's a, a little addition to that. So now we see that when the wave shifts to the right by this amount, by a quarter of a wave, then that can be re uh, represented by shifting the wave via a phase angle. Now what we're going to do in next video is we're going to make this as a continual shift instead of a constant shift of a single jump to the right. We're going to have a con continuous shift as a function of time. So there's going to be a second element to our wave equation there that's going to be a function of time. And we'll see how that develops in just a moment in our next video.